Is the NBA the reason that Jordans became so popular? Let's find out. We know that the NBA is quite picky when it comes to protocol. They always do things with purpose and thought and the rules are never seen without reason. While the league isn't quick to tell players what they can or can't do, there are some items that have been banned completely by NBA executives. Honestly, some of these items are completely bizarre, but others make some sense. These banned items are those that the league deems as hazardous, offensive, or unprofessional. So let's get right into the list. First up at number 12, Dwayne Wade's Fashionable Band-Aids? In 2009, long after fashion pioneer and one-time Tim McGraw collaborator Nelly began the movement, Dwayne Wade started wearing graphic print bandages below his left eye in games. Originally, they were used for their actual purpose of treating an injury, but after that, it shifted to just being for fashion purposes, or in other words, to make a statement. However, it was soon banned from the NBA because they weren't being worn for healthcare purpose. I think this was pretty stupid though, like, let a man do what he wants, you know what I mean? And to be honest, they looked pretty cool too. At number 11, LeBron James's Carbon Fiber Mask. In the 2013-14 NBA season, LeBron James proved that he is not an immortal human after all. When he suffered a broken nose in a victory over Oklahoma City, and LeBron James had to wear this mask to protect his nose, but due to his clear mask not being ready yet, he had to wear a carbon fiber mask in a game against the Knicks. The league, however, was not pleased with this act and requested, more so demanded, that he switch to a clear mask. I guess the league just couldn't bring themselves to accept that there could be a world where they couldn't see LeBron's glorious face at all times, so they banned this practice immediately. And I will again say the mask was pretty sick and I kinda wanna try it on, it just looks fun to wear, you know what I mean? At number 10, Dwayne Wade wearing dark goggles. After suffering from intensified light sensitivity in the wake of a migraine, Dwayne Wade, yup, him again, <laughs> he wore dark goggles in a game against the Knicks. After considering the issue, the league banned the colored eyewear, saying that it could give Wade an unfair advantage because rivals wouldn't be able to see his eyes. A year later, Rondo also suffered an eye injury and also wanted to wear goggles, and of course, the league did not allow this, and I'm going to be honest, this kind of makes sense though, because I mean, you really you have to predict your opponent's move, and you need to look you know, into the other player's eyes, so I guess it does kind of give a competitive advantage, so I see the NBA on this one. Next up at number 9, Rajon Rondo and others wearing their headbands upside down. NBA players use headbands for various reasons, keeping sweat out of their eyes, holding back their glorious hair, or even hiding an unfortunately poor hairline. <coughs> Yeah, it's not just LeBron. And after Celtics point guard Rajon Rondo and others popularized the style of wearing your headbands upside down with the familiar NBA logo inverted, the NBA announced that uniform rules no longer allowed for players to wear their headbands upside down. Next up at number 8, the Forbidden Air Jordan 1. In the starting years of the NBA, players started to partner up with shoe companies and the NBA had no problem with that. I mean, it was a free advertisement on their part. All good until Michael Jeffrey Jordan started doing so. In 1984, Jordan released the most iconic basketball kicks of all time, the Air Jordan 1. The NBA did not like this at all. The reason for this was that the color of the shoes did not match the color of the teammate's shoes and that this was unacceptable. And I think that maybe makes sense? I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, the NBA started fining Jordan $5,000 for every game he wore the shoe. That definitely didn't stop him from wearing them though, and $5,000 was kind of spare change for him. When the NBA realized that he was unfazed by all these fines, they decided to ban the shoe from being worn at all. Such a bummer. However, it wasn't that bad because this ban went on to become the biggest marketing strategy the world has ever seen. At number 7, Sam Perkins of the Pacers do-rag. Sam Perkins on the Pacers wore a do-rag during a preseason game, and he has been the only person ever to wear a do-rag in NBA history. However, the league quickly identified it as a potential safety hazard and banned it, which I really don't understand. Like, how can that be a hazard? I mean, maybe, just maybe, the chances that the do-rag gets unfolded and goes, like, on a player's eye? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Next up, Kelly Oubre wearing Supreme Compression Sleeves. After Kelly Oubre caused a stir by wearing a Supreme Compression Sleeve, the league told him to stop wearing it, which is quite weird, as pointed out by a player himself. Quote, 
It had the NBA logo on it and had a Nike sign on it. The NBA is sponsored by Nike. It's just Supreme, so I don't really know what's all the quarrel, he said. Quote, they shouldn't have sold it to me or they shouldn't have dropped it if we can't wear it and it even has the NBA logo on it because, you know, I play in the NBA, right? I should be able to wear anything that has the logo of what I represent, end quote. He's definitely right on this one. Like, why make it if you can't even wear it, you know? Maybe a franchise like the NBA knows how to scam? I don't know. At number 5, Matthew Deladova's Whoop Wrist Rare. For several games of the Cleveland Cavaliers 2015-16 NBA season, point guard and league-wide mosquito Matthew Deladova sported a Whoop bracelet on his wrist. The Whoop device allowed for Matthew to monitor his health-related measurements like his heart rate or temperature while in-game and provided no harm to anyone in the entire world. However, the NBA saw the situation differently and banned the usage of any wearable technology. At number 4, the number 69 jersey. Have you ever seen an NBA player wearing this jersey number? Because it was never allowed. It's not been explicitly quote banned per se, but it is not allowed perhaps due to the sexual notation of the number or maybe there's another reason. It's not like no one has tried to wear it. I mean, only one player in NBA history, just one, has tried to, but he failed. Can you guess who it was? Yup, you're probably right, Dennis Rodman. Who else would it be? Come on, comment down below what you think about this one. I really don't know, and I want to know what you guys think on this one, so let us know in the comments down below. At number 3, Karen Butler's Straw Chewing NBA Champion and 2-time All-Star Karen Butler is an absolute stud. Arrested 15 times before his 15th birthday, Butler learned and developed his basketball prowess in juvenile detention. So what did the NBA do in 2010 upon noticing that Butler, then on the Dallas Mavericks, was constantly chewing straws on the sideline? Well, they banned Butler's straw chewing for the sake of his own well-being. At number 2, Sam Castle, the Big Balls Dance. The infamous Big Balls Dance refers to a player dropping his hands to his groin area while bouncing them up and down to imply the juggling of large testicles. Well, the NBA didn't like this, and no, not players having large balls, but players implying in front of many families that their clutch plays directly correlates to their huge, yeah, you know what. Now, the NBA fines players, usually to the tune of about $15,000, when they make this explicit gesture, popularized by a man who is remembered less for being a three-time champion and more for looking a lot like E.T. And finally, at number one, Vince Carter's Earbud Ban. In 2004, NBA players and all other people around the world were listening to music on an ancient device known as the iPod. You know, back then it was cool, and the boxy portable stereo allowed for a listener to plug in his or her headphones and listen to their song of choice. For Vince Carter, pregame warm-ups seemed like an ideal place to use his stylish new Apple invention. But unfortunately for VC, the NBA hated music, fun, style, and any combination of those three features. The league banned Carter and any other players from the inner ear warm-up dance party, and their explanation to the Toronto Raptors for why the ban was necessary was absolutely amazing. They said, quote, we informed them that he can no longer do that, which was quoted by then NBA spokesman Brian McIntyre. Yep, that's all they said. So, what did you guys think about these somewhat bizarre bands in the NBA? Drop your thoughts down in the comments down below, I'd love to hear them all, leave a like, and make sure to subscribe to Triple Double Nation for more videos just like this. See you guys next time, have a great day!